Shalom. Today we are going to learn a little more about salt. Salt is absolutely essential for human life. For one thing, salt is an electrolyte. An electrolyte is a material that produces an electrically conducting solution when it's dissolved in the proper solvent, for example, water. So when salt is dissolved in water, it can actually uh, transmit electricity and so it enables the transmission of your nerve impulses and electrical charges you could not use your muscles at all if there wasn't some salt in your body without sufficient sodium your senses would be dulled and your nerves would not function at all salt has a function in the body similar to RNA and that is that its job is to move information from place to place. This is very interesting when we look at the cognate words for the Hebrew word salt, which is melech. We have a word which is malach. Uh, this word means messengers. Genesis 32, 3. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. In Joshua 6:17. And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, to Yahweh. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are in, with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. So here we have salt. It's doing the job of a messenger. And the word for salt in Hebrew, melach, sounds like the word for messenger in Hebrew, also malach. You might be more familiar with this translation of the word malach, Genesis 16:7, And the angel of Yahweh found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. Exodus 23:20. 20, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. So it's good for us to remember when we read the word angel, uh, both in Hebrew and in Greek, the root meaning of the idea is a messenger. It's not uh, a fat little rotund baby with uh, wings on it. The malach, the angel, is the messenger. And just as uh, water is essential for life, so salt is essential for life and they are related in this way. The salt regulates the fluid transfer between the cells and it regulates the water balance in the body. Remember, salt is not only sodium, but it's also chlorine. Chlorine is necessary for digestion. Without it, you cannot digest uh, your grains, including bread at all. You have to have salt to digest these things. So salt is in charge of the regulation of, of the water balance. Now we see sometimes in the Bible that water refers to people. Revelation 17:15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. So the waters are the peoples. In fact, we have a, an idiom, which we use in English, which is the sea of humanity. Now, people require regulation also. And we find another cognate for the salt, melach, and that is the word for king, melech. Genesis 14.1 And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Elasar, Chedalah Omer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations. These are all Malachim, Melech. Uh, Genesis 17.6 And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. In Genesis 14:18, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. So his name, Melchizedek, Melech, king, Tzedek, righteousness. He's the king of righteousness by his name. Psalm 10:16, Yahweh is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. 
There's also a verb uh, associated with this root, malach. Uh, in Psalm 93.1, Yahweh reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. Yahweh is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Again as a noun in Jeremiah 23.5, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. So just as salt regulates many functions of the body, the king rules over the people. One thing I found that was interesting is that the shape of the salt, the crystal, is a cube as is the Holy of Holies. It is the place from which Yahweh rules and reigns his people. To find the measurements in the Mishkan in the tabernacle in the wilderness of the Holy of Holies is a bit difficult. It requires some extrapolation, but it appears that it was 10 by 10 by 10. In Solomon's temple, it's clearly laid out in 1 Kings 6.20, and the oracle in the forepart was 20 cubits in length and 20 cubits in breadth, and twenty cubits in the height thereof, and he overlaid it with pure gold, and so covered the altar, which was of cedar. And we see in the future that the New Jerusalem also is a cube. Revelation twenty one sixteen. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth, and he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. So we have seen many things about salt. The salt of the covenant is forever. The salt preserves us as we preserve the ways of Yahweh. And it represents the fact that it is forever. His word is good forever. I pray this has been uh, helpful for you. And until next time, Tasimita inayim al hashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.